I'm going to show you another video on how to make a J beam and in this one I will go over how to install the things you will need uh, if you haven't already got blender you'll need blender you'll need notepad plus plus you'll need the J beam editor and you'll need the blender J beam exporter plug-in I will link these items in my description where you can get them now for the J beam editor uh, when you download it when you extract it you'll load it up like this and that's all there is to it and you can drag in J beams just left click and drag them and drop them into there so we'll be using this and then in blender when you load it up you will download the plugin that I got a link for and to install it you'll just go up to file or I'm sorry edit preferences add-ons and you'll say install and then you'll go to the downloads where you downloaded it and we find it like some IO or something on it uh, there it is IO mesh J beam is the name of it and you'll install add-on I already installed it so what you'll do once you install it you will check the little box that'll enable it and then go here to save preferences so that's that I'm going to give you these files here let me uh, go to my unpack folder I'll pick I'll pick a mod that's pretty simple uh, I use this cardboard cutout mod and I'm going to name the mod using names that explain things in the J beam so it's a little easier to follow so let me do this real fast just so I can rename this this is gonna the name of the mod is going to be your mod you're going to move the folder into your BeamNG current version mods unpacked this is where the your mod will be this is where you'll put this folder inside this folder you will have uh, a mod info folder and an info all mods have to have this info file let me close everything out of here every mod has to have an info file I'm giving you this file too so this will be your name and this is, is the name of the mod your mod you'll save it and then in the vehicles folder this folder has to also be called your mod and then in here we'll get rid of the stuff that is uh, not needed and we'll rename this template to be your mod which is the name of the mod and the name of the J beam uh, the materials we'll get to that in just a minute we're gonna change this stuff and it'll be um, in a way that you can understand it and put your own textures in here but we'll get to that in, in just a minute what I'll do now is put the J beam in here that I'm giving you which is going to be more or less blank uh, you'll just have to put in the basic information 
Now all J beams start up here. Um, they got that little bracket up there, but then the name of the J beam is here. Well, I'm sorry, the name of the mod is here. Your mod. And this will be your name. And slots is something I'm still learning. I haven't figured this out yet. So we're going to get rid of uh, these reference nodes. This is something we'll fill out too. But for now, we'll leave it blank. Um, we will make this stuff blank because this is going to be related to the mesh you make in Blender. And these are the nodes. So we will get rid of all this stuff. And we're not going to be using this, but I'll leave it in there in case you want to mess with it. We'll get rid of all the beams and all the triangles. And this is about as basic as a J-beam can get with the exception of these thrusters here. Let's just, ig just ignore that for the moment. But I don't want to delete it in case you want to use it. So you got up here your mod. That's the name of the mod. Your name. The slot type will be main. We'll fill out the reference nodes. Uh, this just has to do with how far the camera is away when it spawns and the FOV that the camera uses. The flex bodies is the mesh. This is what you make in Blender. Um, you make a 2x4 or a piece of plywood and that's the name of the mesh. Uh, that's what goes in here. Uh, the group is the name that will associate that mesh to the nodes, the beams, and the triangles. Uh, but mostly the nodes. So let me explain nodes real quick and let me explain beams and uh, triangles. All right, now that I somewhat explained how the beams, the nodes, and the triangles work, uh, now what we'll do is go into Blender and we'll make our first object that's going to be used as uh, a mod object. Uh, be a 2x4. Same 2x4 made in the other videos, just to be a, a little different. So when Blender loads, you're not going to need this light or this camera. You can get them out of there. Uh, you're going to want to put a texture on your object, so um, You'll pick the object, and in here you'll pick material properties, and in base color, you'll click this yellow yellow dot, image texture, and open. And this is where you'll locate the texture that you want to use for a piece of two before, which I think I already got um, one somewhere, maybe in one of these folders. Uh, we got some wood here. This will work. Now, I'm not even going to get into um, like changing different things for like uh, like the types of images you can use and all that, like converting them and all that. I'm not even going to get into that. We're just going to keep it simple. So we're just going to use this wood for our image. JPEG here. So in Blender, we just go to a desktop or wherever you got your image and select it. Now, if you look up here, this is your viewport shading. This uh, it'll automatically guess what it wants the wood to be. Um, 
which in some cases it may work just fine. However, you got your material, that may be what you want. But other times it may not be. But you can hit uh, these over here to scale, rotate, and move the object. Uh, or you can use the hotkeys, like you can use S to scale and then pick X, Y, or Z to. Uh, you know, uh, scale the different ways. Now one way I remember how this yellow and green, which one's which, is I think of an X marks a spot on a pirate map. You know, the letter X is always red. Well, this red line is the X direction. The green is the Y and blue is up and down. So when I hit S to scale something, I, 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 I just I can look at these colors and say, oh, okay, well, X, that's the way I want it to go. So that would be my 2 by 4 there. Now, to adjust the way that the textures are moved on here, you pick the object, you go to Edit Mode. Once in Edit Mode, uh, you will make sure this toggle x-ray is not on that it is actually off that's on that's off when it's off you can go over here to face select and pick which face you want to uh, change the texture for just like this so we'll pick the top then we go to UV editing up here and then once again over here you have to maybe probably move this out of the way pick again viewport shading all right now what you see is your image your jpeg and you got your two by four this square you see is the square that you got selected if you pick a different square it'll show you what it's drawing for that area so you can select these you can use this to move or you can use this to rotate or this to scale or you can use your hotkeys G moves like whatever you got selected whether it's just that or the whole thing G moves it S scales it and R rotates and if you want to lock specifically like 90 degrees without having to guess it you can select it hit R to rotate and then hold control down as you rotate and it'll lock like five degree increments each time makes it easier you can also hit like R to rotate and then once you start rotating hit shift to get real slow you know movements there will be a lot of times you will have to rotate these because the orientation for what you're doing will be wrong. You'll need to rotate it one way or the other. I'm just telling the top to use more of the texture link so it looks a little better. Now I could have found a higher quality image of uh, some wood, but you, know, you can you can use up to like a 16k texture if you want to uh, that's up to you I'm just trying to rotate this and scale it in a way that kind of looks like the side of wood you know how it looks on the sides kind of stretched out in a way but Be all right, I think. The ends, we'll just leave the ends. I ain't gonna mess with that. And this one, let's see. Move it, rotate it. When you hit scale here, you can hit X. You can hit S and then X or S and then Y, it depends on which direction that goes. So once you get the hotkeys, you're familiar with them, things will move a lot quicker in Blender.
which I'm still learning them. I haven't learned them all. I still don't know the ones that I should know. Take that the other way. I think that'll be fine. That'll be good enough. It looks like a piece of wood. All right, now up here you, if you don't have this tab layout or if you don't have UV editing or you don't have any of these that we go to you can get to them by going to this plug you can go and pick them in here which uh, there's a light there's a layout tab uh, there's UV editing tab I'm not sure when you install blender what all it has up here so you may have to go to this little plus sign and add the tab that's missing uh, sometimes you can load other blender files and the whole all this stuff is all moved all around and I hate that because now it's like I have to figure out how to move it all to where I'm used to having it at like you know these things might be at the bottom or something you know or this uh, edit stuff whatever it'll be at the bottom instead of the top but so you can go to layout get back to that big window uh, and here is your object mode and your edit mode those are the only two that we're going to be uh, doing in here all right the next thing is we got to set the origin that's the 3d space it tells the object where to be in the game and what i do is go with the object selected i go to object set origin origin the 3d cursor an object set origin geometry to origin then I'll pick one of these side views here and the green line or the red line depending on which one you picked is the ground and I'm gonna move this up off the ground like this so it's over just a bit you don't want your mod spawning in the ground it'll if it's a destructible mod it'll start breaking it so keep that in mind next thing I want to do is rotate this wood so that it is standing up like vertically so I'm gonna hit R or you can pick over there on the left rotate if you picked over here you would just pick one of these colors depending on which way you want to rotate um, you can always hit control Z to back up but I'm going to just pick it and hit R on my keyboard and rotate uh, it's gonna be the Y R then Y and then I'll hold control and I'll let it click there at 90 degrees then you can hit move over here or you can hit G on your keyboard, whichever, and uh, Z is up. So if you hit G and Z, that moves it up, or just move it up, pick the blue arrow and move it. But I want to go to the side view and get it off the ground a little bit, but not touching it. All right, now that's where I want it to be. I'm going to go to object apply all transforms now I know that thing will be where it's supposed to be the mod will be where it's supposed to be and the 3d object will be where it's supposed to be in the same space <laughs> so sometimes uh, if you don't do that your object will not be inside of the j-beam it'll be somewhere else so this will be the first mod what we got to do is go to object data properties here and you'll see J-beam properties down here if it's not opened up you open it up now this is the prefix now to make this easy to understand I'm going to change the name up here by double clicking on it and call this 
two by four A. It'll be an A, B, C, and a D. But for now, this will just be A. All right. The prefix down here, I'm going to also tell this to be letter A. Now, that'll make sense in a, in a little while. It, right now, it may not. But that's what uh, I'm going to do for that. Now, the next thing I got to do is J-beams do better when there's more tessellation. Like a 3D object like this is pretty simple. It's just, you know, eight, what, eight sides and, you know, some vertices on the corner. You can go into wireframe mode up here to see the wireframe. Then with the object selected, go into edit mode and over here you see vertexes edges and faces now these little dots here these are the vertexes or nodes and the edge that connects the vertexes these are what will be the beams and uh, the shaded part those will be the triangles but back to the wireframe we're going to select this all and go to face triangulate faces now I can explain it a little better and you need to do that also they need to be triangulated which means that three nodes creates a triangle okay two uh, beams I mean two nodes just two nodes creates a beam which is just what connects them to and uh, of course just a beam by itself is just a beam which as I said earlier that's the 3D space location. Each beam's got its own location where it's at in the world. Now for mods to have a little bit better support and durability, they do better when they got more uh, uh, vertices and whatnot. So what we're going to do is select the entire object in edit mode and we're going to go to loop cut and what this will do back up let me back up right before I triangulated that I'm hitting control Z to back up okay now you can see it you couldn't see it with it triangulated so what I'm going to do is in edit mode I'm going to put a loop cut there And what that's going to do is add two more vertices. So, you know, you see right there, uh, there's two of them now. I mean, four of them. I added four more. The reason we're doing that is we're going to select all the vertices, which we have to have this selected, vertex select. We're going to select them all. Uh, we're going to go to face triangulate faces and now we're going to go to mesh J beam nodes connector all right what that did is it connected every node to every possible node 
which are the reinforcements for the uh, J-beam for the mod which gives it strength or it'll be flimsy so that's all we got to do in here we can go back to object mode uh, you can look at the viewport shading or it doesn't matter what you got this set at it's just a preference if you want to see it shaded or not shaded so now what we got to do is export this model as a DAE file um, before we do that though I'm gonna include this file also so you can have it for scale import Collida DAE and where you have this extracted to just load it up for scale it's a shell of the hopper and I only use it just to give me uh, some reference for the size or this board will look this big in the game so I use this to eyeball it to say okay that's how big I need to make it so in object mode with the object selected I'm just going to hit S and scale it down to what I want it to the size to be which that's probably about good for well that might be more like a 2 by 6 but that'll that'll be fine so I can get delete the car get it out of there now we got the scale set object uh, I mean, I'm sorry file export collider and this is going to go into that your mod folder I have to navigate to it there it is your mod vehicles your mod that's the folder it goes in unpacked your mod vehicles your mod it's going to copy the texture over there for us export collider oh and name it uh, I'll just name it your mod All right, now we have to export the J-Beam, but we'll have to save this Blender file first. So this doesn't matter where you save this at. We'll just call this 2x4. Uh, it doesn't matter what you call it. All right, now the next thing, over here in the sides, you have this scene properties. This is the export path for your J beams, where they're going. Which, if you click on this, it will show you where it's going exactly, where it exactly is being exported to. So, you'll need to know that. So, now we're export the J beam file export j beam 2x4a successfully exported one j beam file now all we have to do we'll go into that folder your mod vehicles your mod and you will now see our wood texture that it copied over with the model the DAE and we already have this loaded in our uh, notepad plus plus which you can just drag a J beam left click and drag it uh, right into notepad plus plus so what we're going to do now is go to the exported folder where our uh, J beam was exported to and you'll see it right here 2 by 4 a we're going to drag it left click and drag it right into our notepad plus plus then we're going to left click and drag it out here in the open and say move to other view so we got your mod here and the 2 by 4 there now here are the nodes each node's got that there's that little letter A remember that little A or letter A that I said uh, we're putting right there that's the prefix there it is there 
and these are the vertices right here a through or 0 through 11 there's 11 of them if you looked at this object it looked at the, the vertices in wireframe mode you could count them 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 well there's 12 counting 0 so that's that's what those are and each one of these they got their own place in space X Y and Z and if you look on here each one of these nodes has got X Y and Z and that's what it's saying right here they are X Y and Z so that's how it knows which node is where now all we got to do over here to get our J beam to work is we got to go to the flex body section where we see the word mesh we will go right here and put 2 by 4 a which is we're telling it 2 by 4 a being this model here that's what we're putting there now the next thing we got to put is the group now to make it simple I'm just going to call the group A. Now the next thing we got to do is in the nodes we have to have a group for each group of nodes which we don't have a, a B object yet we just have an A object so underneath this argument here you have the friction coefficient C, the weight of the nodes whether or not they're fixed like glue and don't, don't move uh, the material determines the sound effect it makes when it wrecks or scratches or whatnot whether or not you can collide with it whether or not it can collide with itself or other J beams is what this is so for group A put your little cursor right there over here left click drag all this and then left click and drag and drop and if you drop it right there it'll put it like like this next thing we do is go down to the beams and under this argument and under the beam sprint dampening and the, the form information in this little space right here we're going to copy all these beams which I didn't explain it says right here beams and ID 1 ID 2 that's basically just saying it's just two beams it's just each one of these is just a combination of two different beams which like I said in uh, blender that's just a line connecting two beams is all it is I mean a line connecting two nodes that's all it is and uh, then we go down here to after that go to triangles and you got ID 1 2 and 3 underneath this is where the triangles will go right there and right here you see the triangles under this ID 1 2 and 3 which like I said earlier a triangle is just three nodes that's how it knows uh, which ones make the triangle the polygon or whatever triangle face whatever you want to call it so you'll left click and drag this into there now that's pretty much everything we have to do except for the materials this will get our 2x4 working in the scene we don't have the reference nodes in here yet though so what we're going to do is save this now that we made those adjustments we move that stuff over into here and you may be wondering well why can't you just use the J-beam you exported as the modded the exporter is not complete it's, it's missing stuff it's missing the flex bodies uh, it's missing uh, you know the stuff for the camera uh, the reference nodes this stuff is absent in it 
other than that it pretty much would work you pretty much could take just the missing information and put this missing information in here and it would work but we didn't do it that way we did it this way so now that that's saved now we're going to load our jbeam editor now you will simply take the your mod jbeam and left click and drag it and drop it right into uh, the editor now anything you do in here you can save it will save it just fine to navigate in here you can use your right mouse button to rotate on the number pad seven goes up one goes down four goes left six goes right eight goes forward and two goes back and you can roll your mouse wheel to zoom there is times where you get too close to a mod it will start to show you the inside of it like this and no amount of zoom in will fix it you just have to use two or eight on your keyboard to zoom out until you are not clipping anymore into it so we got it drawing the triangles we're going to select right here show nodes now these are our nodes and whatnot now I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly how to do the reference nodes the right way but I do know like the reference node I'm pretty sure is whichever one is closest to where this red line this green line and this blue line come together which since this is kind of they're all kind of equally distance apart from the bottom I'm just gonna pick one I'm gonna pick AR3 and I'm gonna put that under here reference node AR3 I hit the wrong thing AR3 and then I'm gonna in between those two and it may be hard to see this um, I can't really make this any larger or can I? I think I can let me let me change my display settings see if I can get that any better you can read it that's probably a little better right all right so reference node AR3 and then what's behind it what's the back of AR3 well it looks like to me that would be AL0 so we'll put AL0 there and then what's to the left well if that's the back will the left of that I'll have to roll it around this way what's to the left of AL0 well I don't know there ain't really nothing to the left but what's this one right here we'll pick that one what is that AL1 we'll make that the left one and then for the up which means top we go up to the top what's above whatever you put to the left or closest to may not be one directly above it but in this case there is which is AL2 all right now we are done in here we will save this J-beam and now we will go to the last part which is the material I can move change this back so when you go back to notepad plus plus if you saved what you did in the jbeam editor then yes you want it to uh, reload because what it'll do is it'll just update with the new work that you did in there that's one good thing about this that I like it um, you can work in one and it's smart enough to know there was changes made do you want to reload the file with the new changes yeah so that's what you do yeah you say yeah reload it all right so the materials all right I said we would get to this part so each material has the material name 
these will all be the same. The material name for our object, we go back to Blender. We didn't name it. Uh, we just left it material. I should have named it. I forgot. Uh, let's just leave it like this since we didn't do anything to it. It's already exported. So material will be the name of the texture. That might be pretty easy to actually make it a little easier to understand. So uh, up here we'll change this to material. The name is also material. And we're mapping it to material. <laughs> and it just so happened the class is actually a material also, but we don't do nothing to that anyway. That's always stays that. Now the color map right here is what it's asking for right here. If we go into object mode, pick our object, go over here to material properties uh, in the base color here, wood dot jpeg that is what it's asking for and its location will be vehicles your mod because that's where it's located and it is called I just looked at it I just looked at it and I forgot <laughs> I'm sorry wood.jpg wood.jpg that's what goes right here wood.jpg okay there's not a second texture so if there was a second texture you would have this bracket underneath the, the last thing which this is the last thing here um, but since there's not another texture there won't be a comma after this bracket so we'll get rid of all this and what you will be left with is just a bracket without a comma if you were going to have another texture then you would have a bracket with a comma and then it would end with a bracket without a comma if that makes sense but for now we just need this one texture uh, we save it now we load the game when we check hopefully everything worked the game was already loaded the grid is the quickest one to load it's the one you you got to check a lot of stuff it's the best one to just quickly load up something to see if it's working go up here to your vehicles and somewhere you'll see your mod I don't see it I think I gotta reload the game uh, because it was already loaded. It didn't put it in here. I thought the game. I didn't think the game was running. I thought I'd already closed it. Let me just double check. It's in the right folder. Unpacked. Your mod. Mod info. Your mod. Yeah, it should load it. So let's just reload the game. I think it has to load. Man, my back's killing me. I got to, I got to move. I got to readjust myself. I've been sitting in an awkward position. All right, that's uh, that's better. 
Oh, we should be able to go back and see that in the repository in the mods manager. You should see your mod in here. There it is, right there, your mod. I don't know how to put pictures in it yet. I'm sorry. I can't tell you how to do that yet. I still don't know how to do that. So all my mods so far don't have little pictures to go with them. So go to your car and go to your mod and hopefully it will work. Alright, so here we got our piece of wood. Now I did have to make one change. I had to uh, change the name of the texture to wood because material wouldn't work. It was already used by the game for something else. So I changed it to wood and I just re-exported the DAE file in the your mod vehicles your mod folder which Blender is good about remembering the recent stuff you can click to get back to it real quick uh, but I just overwrote the your mod exported the Collider and then I had to uh, just go into the material file and uh, let me get rid of all this now this is a different uh, this is a different file. I uh, copied the stuff out of another material. Uh, I copied another material out of another mod and put it in here. So it's got a couple other things in here that might not have been in here before. But basically I just had to change the name to wood, 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 JPEG. Not that, that that's got the name of this don't have nothing to do with the name of the texture. Um, that's just a happy coincidence <laughs> but the texture name is wood uh, the name wood map to wood and uh, that's that got it working so we got our uh, we got our piece of wood all right so what we're going to do now is make a second two by four this is real easy it's not nearly as much work as all this has been getting the first one going it's now it's just uh, all easy now so what we'll do is object duplicate all right and we just hit escape so it'll stop moving it now what we're going to do is just move it so that it's about that far apart now we got to name this one 2x4b and since it's got it's a copy of the first one it's going to have the texture also so we don't have to fool with that what we do have to do though is go down to this little object data tab properties here and in here where prefix is we got to put B letter B so now we have to I don't remember did I already damn tell you to do this or not with this 2x4b object set origin origin to 3d cursor object set origin geometry to origin now move it where you want to move it I don't think I did that I can't remember I had to redo part of this and I don't know if I told you already well I told you again if I've already told you so do that and then when you get it where it's close to the ground but not in the ground say object apply all transforms all right now we'll export this and overwrite the other DAE that's in our your mod folder and now we will export the jbeam file export jbeam and it would when we got 2x4b selected uh, see we got it selected there it successfully exported one jbeam file so in notepad plus plus we will go to the exported jbeam folder here and we'll drag 2x4b into there we'll left click and drag it into move to other view and now what we have to do is where these flex bodies are 
got to make one if you don't have this down here you can just the easiest thing to do is just copy this and paste it and make this one B and make the group B now underneath the nodes under where A ended we could just copy this group A we'll paste it and we'll call this one B underneath B we're gonna put our little cursor right there we'll go over here we'll grab the B node see there's our little letter B and we'll drag and drop them things right there then we'll scroll down to the beams and we'll go down to where the A's stop if you don't have a space there you can just put a, another you can add a space but we'll select all the beams over here we'll drag them into there then we'll go down to the triangles and do the same thing now unlike the nodes that have to be separated with groups the beams don't have to have anything separating them and the triangles don't have to have anything separating them so that's all we have to do we can reload our level and we'll have two boards in there now which I already got them games already loaded try and load it twice your mod and look at that you got two boards two perfectly fine pieces of lumber all right so let's make another one why not let's do this let's take uh, this one let's make or either one it don't matter duplicate it hit escape okay say object set origin origin to 3d cursor object set origin geometry to origin now hit R or use your rotate hit R hit X I'm sorry Y control and lock it at 90 degrees and I did not make enough room for them damn things. I was going to set this one on the top. Oh well. We'll rotate this one up back. We'll just do it this way. How about this? We'll do it like this. And we'll look at our side view. And we will move it. And get it as close to the ground without being in the ground like we did the others. Yes, right there. Now that it's there, object apply all transforms. Recall this one B, I'm sorry, C. And in the nodes over here in the object data properties, we'll put in the node C. We will export the Collider, your mod, overwrite it. All right. Now with the number C board selected, file, export, JBeam, 2x4C. Now go back to where JBeams are exported. You'll see uh, 2x4C. We'll go back into our notepad plus plus. We'll drag C into there. Now you see our little C, a little letter C. That's in front of the beams, the nodes, and the triangles. So now we just have to make another flex body, another mesh. And this will be... And oh, by the way, this stuff doesn't have to be lined up in any particular way. It's just done like this for neatness, to look neat. It don't matter if it's not exact. So this one will be 2x4C and it'll be a letter C. 
for a group and then we'll copy this group if you don't got enough room at the end of that just hit escape get you a little room there paste in group B change it to C now we'll do is take these nodes here and we'll drag and drop them under C we'll go down to the beams and at the end of the letter B's we'll put all the letter C's you can left click and then scroll down and then uh, hold, hold shift and select them all that way too it's kind of quicker you'll really want to do that when you got a lot of them so now we got those in there we'll just add another space if we don't have it in between that bracket and this we'll hit give us some more room we'll select triangles and we'll drag and drop them into there we'll hit up here save we'll go back to the game exit back to the main menu and reload level reload or mod and there'll be three boards in there one two three just like that all right so we're getting the hang of this now all right so we're gonna make a copy of this one Um, we're going to say object set origin origin to 3d cursor object set origin geometry to origin now this one we're going to rotate like we wanted to do the other one we're going to rotate it to 90 degrees and we're going to move it up to be on the top up here above these two just like that as close as possible without actually being actually inside so that's pretty close that'll be close enough not too close not too far away but that's that's what we're gonna get right there we'll call this one 2x4d and before I forget object apply all transforms now down here in its little object data properties we'll put prefix d all right we'll export the entire scene overwrite the other one export collider exported four objects at the bottom there you see that now we'll go to file export jbeam 2x4d and you guessed it we go back to notepad plus plus we go to the exported folder for the J-beams and we drag D into there and you probably already know by now you got to put in a new mesh because you got another object in the scene. So we'll copy that, paste that, and we'll change this one to D. and group D and then we will select uh, this name here paste it and change this one to D I gotta give ourselves a little some room there we'll take these D nodes because there's a little letter D that we put there in our little prefix if they didn't all have different things there'd be a lot of numbers a lot of they wouldn't have a prefix uh, you you couldn't have a bunch of different objects because they'd all be sharing the same numbers and stuff this way there it keeps them uh, separated so the D's in there we go to the bottom of the beams and we put in the D beams and then the D triangles after that
save. Now we'll go back to our main menu. Reload the level, reload our mod. Your mod. And we got... <laughs> well, you know, everything can always be perfect. And they're kind of like inside of one another. I probably should have put a little more space. Hey, but hey, that's not hard to do. All you got to do is go back into um, Blender. And this is actually pretty quick to do this. Now, to make this kind of modification, you can just take this beam, I mean this board, and we'll just move it up some. Just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and say apply all transforms. I never know with this thing if it's going to matter. Export. J beam export the two by four and uh, export the collider rewrite override it now in notepad plus plus since both of these files are already open it'll say this file has been modified by another program so basically what it did is just all it did is it just changed the location just a little bit for these nodes here so this is all we got to replace are just the nodes in this case because the beams and triangles are exactly the same the only things changed is just a couple points here and there for the uh, locations so we'll drag and drop them suckers right there save it reload the level and hopefully this time the beams won't be inside of one another and it'll stack up there just quite nicely. Well, not quite, but that has to do with the actual geometry of the beams. There probably is not enough... Damn it, I did not mean to do that. There probably is not enough... Uh, It probably should be you see how remember we put that loop cut earlier you can kind of see it right there there should probably be at least two for this item I mean that's just a guess there is some things you can do to make the beam uh, inter where they don't touch but like at a certain place like you can adjust the threshold where they are uh, but you know, I had the same problem with my uh, dominoes. They'll they'll go into one another too. It just happens. I mean, it's not perfect. I mean, they do kind of go. That shit does happen, unfortunately. But you know, it's still kind of cool how it all works. But yeah, that's just one thing. It's not exact. I mean, I'm sure there's ways to make it. Uh, work a lot better than that I just I don't know what all the all the J-beam settings make all the different things do you know behave in the different ways but uh, I will say this we can do this we can go up to friction coefficient and we can increase that we can uh, then go down to this is how much something slides on the ground say 0.5 would be like an ice cube sliding on the ground maybe 1.5 would be like something that would grip more I can't think of really an example maybe a rock tumbling down the road how it reacts to the ground and the more up it goes the more it's got like this gripness to it where it grips so we'll increase that a little uh, then we'll go down to the uh, beams now this is the beams spring the damping the deform how much it takes to deform the strength and all that 
well, we can mess with this dampening to see lower it. I don't really know how to explain what damping does. Um, it kind of is like the absorption of the impact that reduces the oscillation of uh, the spring, which the spring is how much force it takes to compress uh, a, 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 a beam, which is the line that connects between two nodes. Let's see what this does. Let's reload it. Did I save it? Yeah, I did. All right, let me show you how to do something else. Let's say you want to uh, connect something together so that it's attached, like nails, for example, like you nailed something into something. For this, you're gonna need to load the beam editor and drag your mod into it and then here you will see um, the J beams with their triangles and all that now come down to the beams and at the very bottom of the beams where the beams in put a space and you can put this little note anytime you got this little slash slash dash dash that's a note to yourself you can say connections connect that's just a note and you always end with a dash dash it's like slash slash dash dash you put your note and then two more dashes and then you put the left you left click so when you left click in here whatever happens in here will apply to that line so we're gonna go to beams up here at the top and this is add it's hard to see but it has to do with the damn window scaling in this program. So we want to connect some of these like they're attached with like an invisible force, which is unfortunate these nodes aren't directly over one another, but we're going to connect this one to that one. Let me get in closer so you can see what I did. And I'm going to connect this one to that one. And then I'm going to connect this one to this one this one to this one I'm gonna go to the other side I'm gonna do the same thing with them and we'll connect this one to there that one to there this one to here and this one to here now I don't exactly know how that's gonna do but Let's save it and load it up and see. Exit out of the to the main main menu. Reload the level. And this will behave quite differently. I mean, not at first glance. It's not looking any different probably but hit control to pick your beams grab a corner and look at that you can see where these things are magically attached to one another now there are settings to adjust how much these beams can stretch or not stretch or break or not break uh, they can break now they're not unbreakable 
I mean, if you sling them hard enough, they should break. Which I think it's probably quite high, the amount of force that they're currently set at. I don't know if I can break them like this. I mean, they are quite... There, it broke. So that's how you can attach things. Like if you're building something and you got to, like, say, a sheet of plywood. Which, hey, that's a great idea, actually. Let's do that. Let's uh, put a piece of plywood in the front. Like it's an actual, you know, little the beginnings of this crummy little shack. Add a mesh, add a cube. I go ahead and set the origin to 3D cursor. Object set origin to geometry, or geometry to origin rather. Scale it so that it's flat like a piece of two by four. I mean, piece of plywood. Now you have to be careful here that you don't do this. If you go into the negative, it will turn the J-beam inside out. You will always know if something is inside out if you go into the J-beam editor where we were connecting those little lines just now and it's red. If it's red, it's inside out. <laughs> uh, which when you if you created J beams the old way where you had to actually put in node values you had to put them in the three nodes they had to be entered in counterclockwise like the first node the second node the third node and that would make the triangle green if you did it the opposite way first node second node third node clockwise which would mean they were written one two three instead of uh, three two one or one two three instead of three two one that determined whether it was inside out so that's how that was done I mean, it happens to me quite a bit in here and I end up going back and damn flipping it around but let's get this thing right here apply all transforms we can give it the same texture uh, by just going to the texture here and just picking that wood that's already there and uh, if you want to UV edit it you can you can certainly do that you can uh, make this look a little better by scaling it more appropriately to look like uh, on that side Let's see, scale. All right, I'm not going to worry about the sides. So that's that. That's good enough. All right, we're going to call this. I don't know. We'll just call this plywood A. Now over here in the little... Uh, object data properties we'll just call this E uh, we're not going to move it anymore we'll apply all transforms now I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to pick this uh, loop cut I'm going to put a loop cut here I'm going to put one here and I'm gonna put one across this way which is probably what I should have did with that plywood too but I mean that 2 by 4 I didn't put one that direction on the 2 by 4 which is probably why they're running into each other which uh, I mean you can always add them and all that but then that well you should have just did that from the beginning uh, to be honest so let's save our file we ain't saved it in a long time uh, let's pick all the vertices now that we got our loop cuts. We'll turn x-ray mode on to select all of them. Oh, gotta change that to select. Select them all. Mesh, J-beam, and pick that thing there and it will make all those kind of connect like that. Go to object mode. 
we're going to export this back we overwrite the other one and we're going to export oh I forgot edit face triangulate faces alright now we can export it file export jbeam plywood a now we uh, go back to notepad plus plus plywood a drag it into here we'll put in a new flesh a mesh we'll just copy this one paste it plywood a but we're gonna call it we're gonna give it group uh, E we're gonna put a uh, go to the nodes uh, we're gonna make a group E drag all these nodes in there and then all the beams oops I mean to pick that last thing there we'll put these under the bottom of the beams which we'll put them above this so we don't get these confused then we'll go to the triangles and stick in the triangles just like that file save now we're going to load this editor back up drag this new newly saved J-beam and what we're going to do now is go down to the beams where these connectors are and we're going to put a little cursor right there let's get in a little closer here all right now I'm gonna connect some of these just like they were little nails getting closer so I can see all right so like I said put the little cursor right there beams click the add which is that one there and I'm gonna connect this one to this one I'm gonna connect this one to this one and I'm gonna go up connect this one to that one go up some more and let me look what do we got there uh, this one to this one and this one to this one let me spin the camera around this one to that one and this one to this one oops that's the wrong one if you ever mess up you just d delete the last one that you put in there and hit this refresh button and it'll take it out of there actually I need to take that one out too that's the wrong one I wouldn't mean to connect to that one. I was trying to attach them to this plywood if you ever don't have this select uh, it will put them all up here at the top which nothing can be before this bracket so what you do is just copy them and just paste them down there and delete them so this brackets actually the first thing so remember that too
I'm going to put that little bit there and then uh, maybe a couple more. All right, let's save it and load it. And that'll probably be all I do with this. But I think repetition makes perfection. Oh, I gotta exit to the main menu. Reload it. Let's see our wonderful shed we just made. Well, look at that. We got us a little shack at the beginnings of one. And you know, it's possible to have many different textures. We're just keeping it simple. We just got this one texture. But let's do something different. Let's bring in a car. Spawn new. Let's run into it. <laughs> how it held together with those little connectors which really you can have every one of them values set to different strengths so like some are break easier than others all you would do is in the uh, inside of your uh, where your beams start, you would just take this information and copy it. And you go down to where you want to apply the new setting, say like here, and you paste it. Let me close all these so that we got more room in our window. Okay. Anything that falls underneath an argument will follow that rule. If you had this copied and pasted right here, then everything would follow the rule for whatever's underneath that. So you can have all these different settings. And this isn't even this isn't even the tip of the iceberg what all the stuff you could do in here. Uh, there's so many more things than just this. But you could have this thing where it breaks and deforms like the beam string beam spring is actually strength this is actually what makes the damn little beams break where they separate. Like this would have a lower value, say a thousand for example. We'll save it. We'll load it, reload it real quick just to show you this one quick thing. And those connections will break a lot easier now. It won't take much and it snapped it off not much at all not nearly as much as it was holding on earlier now another thing is the uh, deform I believe this one the lower this number is when the mesh will actually start to lose polygons it will start to actually destroy uh, so we'll do a little create a little chaos which I probably have to run into it to get as much actually if you put something in slow motion it seems to like really exaggerate the uh, forces now 
and then like if you lock something and then hit or reset it where'd it go see if I can do it and hit home it's starting to stress that model starting to break it see now it's missing pieces where it's physically destroying that's putting a lot of g-forces on it doing that kind of stuff especially in, when you think it is even more like in slow motion so yeah it done tore that up to the point you can't even see it you can hit control B to see the beams Damn, what happened there? Uh, and then hit control B, 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 and hit B until you get the stress. And you can reset it, and it'll show you if you look close enough. Uh, well, it's hard to see. It's hard to see in here, but there's stress lines. It, sh it shows the stress on the board, which blue is, is little stress red uh, is a lot of stress so you see it's getting a little stress but the more I'm pulling on it the more it's wanting to exert forces on it you see it turning red yeah it's already broke but that's what that does you can look at the different views uh, by hitting control B and cycling through them all and looking at the beams it'll show you where things are connected looking at the game cars hitting control b you'll see even though parts break off you'll still see where they're connected also with their things and if you want to have more uh control over what the damn different uh what all the different beams can do i mean you can just look at one of like the games mods like the truck pickup truck for example uh just load in one of their Loading one of their J beams. Just you have to unzip it, unzip their J beam, but load it in. Like let's see, where's the fenders? Fenders, fenders. I don't see it. There it is. There's one. Or there's a fender flare. Just load it into there. And you'll see they got their mesh, they got their, that's their mesh name and the group they give their group. But, uh, go to their beams, where the beams are. I guess this, this says it got that on it. This one don't have beams on it. I don't understand how they got their some of their stuff put together. That's, some of it's kind of confusing to me. Alright, so here's beams on the doors. So you got pre-compression, you got a type, you got long bound, short bound. Uh, this is what they got their dampening. Now you can put FLT max in the strength. That will mean that it will be the strong as it can possibly be. Like the maximum strength, something almost undestructible so that's what that is if you don't want something to break at all um, uh, let's see they got like these different deform limit expansion beam deform uh, I haven't used that before there's a lot of these I haven't used but you can look at uh, all their others you can kind of start seeing how some of this stuff kind of comes together uh now this stuff you can look all this up they got this on the wiki 
uh, which explains all that stuff if you go to uh, let's see introduction into J beams beams nodes which one is it no I don't want trying to do This ain't the one I'm thinking about. It's one that's like a little got little movies playing in it. This one, I think. Yeah, this is the one. Introduction to J beams. It explains what the J beams, the beams, and yeah, it goes on and explains what uh, like a beam spring, how stiff something is. Uh, that's the. Uh, Let me load mine up. Beam spring. That's explained here. A soft spring or a stiff spring, depending on uh, the the spring uh, number. And then you got uh, the damping. No damping on the left. Some damping on the right. that's damping and then beam deform like that beam got deformed this one reverted back to its original position so like they got that set to 5000 this one would be FLT max on the right it won't stay deformed it'll spring back so that's uh, this here, beam deform. And I think you uh, FLT max also, and you can put that in there, if I'm not mistaken, that will also work in there. And then you got the beam strength, which just shows it great, like how the bumper breaks off like it's supposed to, but on the other one it doesn't. It's kind of sticks onto there. Uh, That's the strength. Ah, uh, there's a million things, but I think that's all I'm gonna go over. But this is a great documentation. This goes over a lot of stuff, and it explains, like, if your mesh is, your mod is doing this jiggling and wiggling and stuff. It explains that. Uh, but you can keep going, and it goes over all the different things. Uh, and I, I I can tell you now that when I first started looking at this stuff, it didn't do no damn good at all. In fact, uh, I'll be looking at this stuff again later because I'm having problems with slots. I'm trying to figure out the slots, how to do the slots, and it's it's like Chinese language to me. Uh, but it just takes a little time. You just have to the more you mess with it. That's why I was hoping that this, using this uh, tutorial, using this J-Beam, I'll erase the stuff out of here so that it's easy to uh, uh, you know, like from the beginning of the video where there's nothing in it, you'll be able to like easily just drag and drop stuff into where it's supposed to go and like I said this is just the very basic stuff oh I may not have said the node material there's several different ones uh, there's actually a list of them um, but like this just determines like how it sounds like when it hits on the ground metal wood cloth whether it's metal scraping or the sound of uh, uh, wood or whatever um, that's pretty much all I can tell that that does. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it there, and I, I got to edit this thing. And I had to had a couple mistakes. I got had to I got to fix 
or something went wrong and I had to yeah, it's gonna be a nightmare <laughs> but I hope this helped somebody like I said use these files to however you can use them uh, edit them however you want put your name on it uh, whatever you want to do with it 